Today I'll show you a dashboard that I've built with Amazon QuickSight using ESG data that I've sourced from AWS Data Exchange. I'll be using a CSR Hub data product that you can find on AWS Data Exchange's sustainability landing page. Right there. The dashboard provides insight on ESG performance at a regional, sector, industry and company level. And that might be useful for research purposes, innovation projects or solution development. But for my demo, I'll be a business analyst looking at risk and opportunity in an investment portfolio. These same tools would work equally well to monitor risk in your supply chains, as an example. This is the front page of my dashboard. And as an investment analyst, I have a lot of different tools and third party data sources. So this front page is a high level aggregate view. On the left, I've provided a little information about the data provider and their credentials. But equally from here, a consumer might get links to other data sets in their catalog, uh, links to other SaaS tooling, or be provided with interesting insights or anomalies from this data set. On the right, you can see four top level aggregates for community, employee, governance and environment. Each of these aggregates is made up of a number of underlying metrics and ratings ranging from 0 to 100. At the top of the screen, we can see a spark line tracking the performance of all companies in this data set over time and a forward looking forecast. If we want to filter the data, we can see five filters for region, country, sector, industry, and at the bottom for company. So let's say we're an investment firm and we favor investments in firms that excel in environmental sustainability and happen to be really well governed. And let's say we're looking at emerging markets. So as a region, we could choose South Asia, as we know they're strong in terms of environmental and governance performance, and maybe compare that to somewhere else we're researching, like South America. And straight away, we have a visual indicator of where it might be better to invest our time and effort based on our personal bias for well-governed organizations that focus on environmental sustainability. And regions, just a single example. As you can see, we can conduct these same comparisons by country, sector, industry, and individual company. If we want to dive a little deeper into this data, we can move to the second sheet of our dashboard, which is detail. On this sheet, our filters have been carried across from the summary. So we're looking specifically at South America. Here we can start to understand the shape of our data. And by that, I mean what it's made up of, its distribution and performance within the specific ESG top level rankings. So for customers, the size and nature of the sample will provide the quorum and that will help them understand or identify whether a small sample might be introducing bias. A distribution will help them understand the level of volatility or variance in that market. And the historical performance will immediately identify any outlier top level rankings like environment or governance where we have a baseline level of expectation. From here, we've heat mapped the top 100 performing companies across the four top level aggregates. So environment, community, governance and employee. So depending on which particular top level ranking we're interested in, and let's say it's environment, we can see a box size equivalent to the overall ranking, and that looks the same all over here. But now we can see highlights and lowlights in environment based on the color of the box. So for an environment focused organization, we now have a list of companies to investigate and maybe some to avoid. Finally, on this sheet, we've investigated bias. And CSR Hub research shows a worldwide balance between firms with a bias towards community versus a bias towards employee. Roughly one third of companies are balanced. One third favor community 
and one third favour employee. And you can see that balance is maintained here in this particular market. But if we look at the secondary bias model, which we built in for environment versus governance, we can see a pronounced bias towards environment in South America. Returning to the top of our sheet, viewing markets is interesting, but as a reader, I want to be able to conduct comparisons. And that's where our next four sheets come in. Region, country, sector and industry. Before we take a look at those sheets, we're going to quickly remove the top level filter from region so that we can see our entire data set and move back across to the first of those sheets, region. Immediately, you can see that our reader now has the ability to filter individual regions. They can see highlights and lowlights. They have a chronology. They have a series of downloadable tables and two heat maps. Scrolling back to the top, we'll quickly introduce a filter for the region. So for today, we will look at Europe, North America, South America, and South Asia. Once we've applied that filter, you can now see our side-by-side -side performance comparison. We're provided with our tables here, and if an analyst wished to use this data for downstream processes, it's really easy to select the table, click this button here, and export this data to CSV or Excel, and, and this is the top level aggregate data. Um, we've also provided a second table that specifically highlights the top 200 performing companies um, within this specific cut of the data. Finally, we're using heat maps, again, to look at the top 100 performing companies and map their employee and community ratings and their governance and environment ratings. So for our audience, they should now have a series of interesting data points on individual companies or regions for further deeper analysis. As an example, they may wish to take this data and compare it alongside stock performance to see how ESG performance correlates to business performance. As you can see at the top of the screen, I've provided four consistent sheets. So if we just move across to industry, you can see it's consistent formatted sheets across these four individual cuts. And that brings us to our final sheet, portfolio. On this sheet, we've provided a parameter which identifies a set of companies which we're interested in. We can call that our portfolio. Now, specific to the portfolio, our analyst and his audience has access to a multi-select drop-down where they can add and remove firms to see what impact that might have. A series of KPIs, which provide the overall portfolio performance with a month-to-month -month comparison. We have month-over-month -month performance for our four top-level ESG rankings and a view of performance over time. On the left-hand side, we've created a series of insights which automatically provide us with data on our top performing companies, sectors and industries and the contrasting poor performers. These insights are automatically updated and generated when the data changes and represent potential risk or opportunity to our reader. In my scenario, I've decided that my audience favours environment and governance ratings over the other top level ratings. So I've duplicated these insights, which cater for overall ratings right now, to also cater for a specific focus on firstly environment, but secondly, on governance. As you can see, we get a slightly different view of the data with each different focus. There is some consistency, so we can see utilities performing well overall as within the industry in governance and you can see utilities also performing well overall here but there are also interesting quirks of the data visible that we might want to investigate like we can see that healthcare is is not performing particularly well as we can see here 
But if we look within environmental performance, we can see healthcare here performing well. And we can see healthcare here performing well. And that might indicate that governance and environment ratings are maybe propping up community or employee performance. So our audience now has a number of clues about risks and opportunities in the portfolio. And that is based on our personal preferences. Moving to the right of the dashboard, we're monitoring the sectors that make up our investment portfolio over time. And we've got some concerns around transportation, travel and agriculture and mining. We're also looking at our portfolio's performance across the top four level aggregate ratings over time. And as I've already said, we have a preference for environment and governance. So the next three graphics are going to use scatter plots to highlight anomalies, outliers, or anything that may be against our philosophy. In the first, we've mapped our primary axis, governance and environment. And as you can see, we have a strong consistent base in that 60 to 80 box. And that's where we'd prefer everybody to be. We can quickly spot any many massive variances that represent risk or opportunity and immediately act upon them. My second scatter plot is our first chance to look at the detailed metrics that make up the top level aggregates. Here we can see environment rating plotted against human rights and supply chain, which is a metric contributing to the community top level aggregate. Again, we have some really strong base performance, but we have even greater outliers this time, which would definitely be best to investigate. My final scatter plot looks a little like a swoosh, and this time combines governance and community development and philanthropy. And this is the first time that I've touched on these low level metrics, of which there are quite a few. So as you can imagine, I have barely scratched the surface of the insights that we can derive from this data. To close out the sheet and my demo, I've provided our reader with a series of heat maps for the bottom performing 100 companies in the portfolio. Our heat maps align with the scatter plot axis we discussed above and again provide us with a really clear visual indicator of risk. So hopefully you've seen how easy it is to derive insight from an ESG data set and how useful Amazon QuickSight is as a business intelligence tool. That completes my demonstration. If you'd like to find out more about ESG data, please visit the AWS Data Exchange Sustainability landing page. And for more information on Amazon QuickSight, check out the product pages on our website where you'll find resources like tutorials and getting started documentation.